No, Ron Bear said bitterly, you cannot understand. You are taking the language of reason, and I'm thinking of abstract terms. The doctor looked at the Republic and said he did not know whether he was speaking the language of reason or if he was speaking the language of facts, which were not necessarily the same things. The journalist adjusted his tie. So that means I shall have a message some other way, does it? In that any case, he said, in a short defiance, I shall leave this town. The doctor said that he understood that too, but it was none of his business. It, yes, it is your business, Rambert said, flaring up suddenly. I came to see you because I thought I was told that you were a major role in the decision that had been taken. So I thought that in one case, at least, you might undo what you had to help to do. But you don't care. You thought of what, no one. You did consider those who were kept apart. For you acknowledged that, and since this was true, you did not want to consider such cases. Oh, I see, said Robert. You're going to tell me about the public service, and that the general good consisted of happiness of each. Come now, said the doctor, who seemed to be emerging from the moment of absent-mindedness. It's that it's other things you should not judge, but you are wrong and feel angry. If I could get away from this business, I shall be happy indeed. It's just that there is a certain thing in my position that forbids me to do. The other man shook his head impatiently. Yes, I was wrong. I got to get annoyed. I've taken enough of your time already. For you asked him to let him know that he was up, was up and not hold against him. There was some, surely to co some common ground that they were could meet. Suddenly, Robert seemed bewildered. I think so, he said after a pause. Yes, I think so. In spite of myself, in spite of everything you have told me. He paused again. But I cannot approve of your attitude. He pulled his hat down over his forehead and quickly walked away. Ray saw him go in the hotel where Jean Tarou was living. After a moment, the doctor took his hand, shook his head. The journalist was right to be impatient for happiness. But he was right, was he right to accuse Rayu? You are thinking in abstract terms. Was that truly an abstraction, sending his days in the hospitals where the plague was working overtime, bringing the number of victims up 500 on average per week? Yes, there was an element of abstraction, an unreality and misfortune, but the abstraction starts to kill you and you have to get to work on it. And Ryu knew that this was not the easiest thing to do. It was not easy, for example, to manage the auxiliary hospital, which was his responsibility. There were now three of them in all. He had had to convent one room, opening the consulting room to an administration's area, and the pit dug into a floor formed a lake of disinfectant in the midst of which was still a small island of bricks. The, pa the patient were transported to the island, quickly undressed in his clothes, thrown into the water, washed, dried, and covered in the correspondent hospital gown, and was passed on to Ryu, then taken to one of the wards. They have been forced into use the courtyard of the school, which had now contained 500 beds, and almost all of them were occupied. After the morning administrations were, he was charged of himself. The patients were vaccinated and then swelling lances. Then Rayu once again checked the figures before going into his afternoon rounds. Finally in the evening he made his visit to the home last at night. The previous night when his mother handed him the telegram for the young Monsieur Rayu, she had pointed out that the doctor's hands were shaking. Yes, he said, but I have preserved. I shall be less nervous. He was healthy and tough, Rayu. He was not yet tired, but his house for visit, for example, had become unbearable. Diagnosing the infection meant quickly removing the patient. And here, the difficulty of the abstraction became because the families knew that they would not see the patient again until he or she had was cured or dead. Have pity, doctor, said the Lord said me, I'm Lord, mother of the chambermaid who had worked with Rue's hotel. 
What do you mean? Of course he had pity. But where did that get anyone? He had to telephone. Then the sirens of the ambulance sounded. In the early days, the neighborhood would open their windows and look out. Later, they hurried to close them. Then began the struggles, tears, pleas, in short, abstractions. And the apartments overheated by fever and the extinguished sense of madness played out. And some sick person was being taken away. Where you could go. On the first few occasions, he had merely rung for the ambulance and sped off towards his patients without waiting for the arrive, but the relatives locked their doors, preferring the tete-a-tete with the plague of the separation, knowing that what them meant, shouts, orders, and arrival of the police, then later the army and the patients was seized and forced. In the early weeks, Ryu was obligated to wait until the ambulance came, and then when the, every doctor had accompanied on the visit, the voluntary inspector, Ryu was again able to run from one patient to the next. But at the beginning, every evening, it was like the one when he had to come into Man Lord's in the little apartment decorated with the fans and the artificial flowers to be greeted by a mother who said with a forced smile, I do hope it's not the fever that everyone's talking about. He turned his back to the sheets and the nightdresses, stared at the silence of the red patches and the belly and the thighs and the swollen lip notes. The mother looked between her daughter's legs and hollowed. Unable to control herself, every e evening mothers would shout like this. The distracting manner, the silence of the bellies, and the displaying of the signs of death. Every evening, hands would grasp Ryu's arms, while useless words promised the tears poured forth. And every evening, the ambulance sirens would set off, and the sense of distress and pointless of any kind of pain. At the end of the long section of such evenings, each like the next, Ryu could no longer hope for anything except the continuing series of similar senses. Forever repeated. Yes, the plague like abstraction was motionless. The only thing that may have changed that Ryu himself had felt that in the evening beneath the monument of the Republic, aware only the hard indifference that was sitting to fill him, still looking at the hotel door which Rumbert had vanished.